So great question here about Instagram and sort of like the different parts of it and how they, they integrate. Um, right now, just for this, this ease of this q and I, I can't show you my phone screen, which is really how the best way of using Instagram, even as a creator, to, to be doing via the phone. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to ask you to take my Instagram course for, <laughs> for all the details. But let me just gonna give a basic overview strategy for whatever I can say here um, on, on, on camera here. So Instagram has several ways of creating content distributing content. There's the famous Instagram stories, you know, uh, there's f famous Instagram reels is also, you know, very famous. There's, um, and then Instagram grid, which is, you know, usually when people think of, oh, I went to your Instagram profile and look at your posts. They're talking about the grid, which is, you know, you go to someone's profile, you scroll down past their bio, and then you see these different um, boxes, right, of, of, of content, of the posts they made on Instagram. So that's the Instagram grid. So I'll kind of start there because that's the the traditional Instagram content is is just the grid, and the grid can be either a single photo with captions. Captions meaning, you know, when you you see the photo, and then below the photo is like tiny small words that you can click more and then read whatever they wrote up to like I think it's two thousand characters or or is it twelve hundred these days? Two thousand something like that. Now anyway, you can you can look it up. Um, so that's the traditional Instagram images or just a single image. And then in, in, in the grid, you can also post Instagram carousel posts, which if you go to my Instagram profile and see my Instagram posts that are words, those are carousel posts because you click on it and then you can slide, you can, you can scroll through a, a, a single post can have up to 10 slides. So a single, they click on the post, they see the post, that they see the first slide of the post, and they can swipe to see the second slide, third slide, fourth slide. And you can have the, the carousel post, uh, 10 slides can either be an image per slide or, and the, by the way, an image can be a bunch of words, right? I, that's how I post articles on Instagram is using the carousel post format. I have a YouTube video on how I create my Instagram carousel uh, posts so you can and even I even give the template the Canva template for my Instagram carousel so you can search on YouTube for IG carousels George Cow and you'll find my videos about that okay so the Instagram carousel can have an image image can be words or a picture whatever and and inside the carousel can also be videos yes you can when they swipe it could be a video a short video as one of the slides if if you prefer anyway I haven't been that fancy i just keep it real simple so whatever okay so the grid can have images or carousels or videos can be part of your grid as well and videos uh on instagram basically can be up to one hour long you can upload a video of up to one hour long as far as i can tell again these things they keep changing it over time you can if you'd want to confirm the length and the maximum length or whatever minimum maximum you can always google it for for what it is at the current time so um and if a video that you upload is under 15 minutes i believe is the threshold these days if it's under 15 minutes of a video they will automatically call it a reel r-e-e-l okay a reel now what's confusing about this is that when people say Instagram real, they usually are thinking of like, they're really thinking of stories, okay? Which are like 15 second videos, up to 60, up to 90 second videos for, um, for an Instagram story uh, video. Um, because reels has, basically, let me, let me give you the, the, the dirty secret behind this, right? Basically, Instagram felt a lot of pressure from TikTok. Instagram, the company, felt a lot of pressure from TikTok, which is like up and coming and, oh, not up and coming. It's a big deal everywhere now. TikTok videos, right? And they're like, oh, we got to compete with TikTok. And then YouTube, of course, is trying to compete with TikTok too. And YouTube came out with YouTube shorts to, to come try to compete. Everyone's trying to compete with TikTok. And so Instagram, the Instagram bosses basically said, all right, Instagram team, we better compete with TikTok. Short form videos are the thing. We're going to create something. Actually, I think I'm not sure which one came first, TikTok or Instagram Reels, but whatever. Let's make Reels. Let's really emphasize Reels in our algorithm. So then everyone knew, oh my God, Instagram is emphasizing Reels in their algorithm. The short form video to compete with TikTok. So make Reels, everybody. Make short form video because uh, they're going to feature it more than I, I, every other type of post on Instagram. Okay. All right. So then over the years, as they continue doing this, as with all things Instagram, 
things started shorter. Like, okay, reels had to be under 60. I think originally reels had to be under 30 seconds or whatever. Okay. And then, all right. And then over the years, like, you know, the, the, the pressure from creators to please let us record longer reels. And the reels became 60 seconds. Okay. So anything 60 seconds or less can be a reel. And then the more pressure from creators. All right. Reels can now be 90 seconds. You see where this is going. This is, and then, and then, um, uh, now, you know, the Instagram team is trying to follow the, their, their corporate masters saying reels are important. So they're like, they're, they're, so they cheated and they said, guess what? We're going to call any video under 15 minutes, a reel. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what are you talking about? It's just a video. No, we're going to call it a reel if it's under 15 minutes. That's ridiculous. It's just, even though it might not be prioritizing the algorithm anymore, they're calling it a reel because their corporate masters, uh, you know, the, the shareholders said, please make reels more important to compete with TikTok. It's ridiculous. So anyway, that's why it's so damn confusing. Everyone's confused. What the hell is a reel? I, I don't know. I mean, it's basically, so it's an Instagram video. Let's just call it that because most Instagram videos are under 15 minutes anyway, right? You're going to upload a video on Instagram. It's probably under 15 minutes anyway. So they're calling it a reel. Are they prioritizing it in, in the algorithm? Nobody really knows anymore. Okay. That's the, that's the other confusing part. So Long story short, I think they're still prioritizing short form video, partly because human beings have short attention spans these days and short form is just easier for them to consume and easier for them to engage with. And so that naturally the algorithm tends to perform things that humans find easier to engage with. Okay. All right, let's go to, so reels still show up. Let me actually check my Instagram these days. Reels show up in the grid, but they also have a special tab in the grid. There's a special tab in the middle for reels. Okay, so it's kind of, it's it's confusing. So last thing I'll talk about is stories. Stories are where when you look at someone's Instagram profile or when their little profile picture shows up on Instagram, you'll notice sometimes it has a circle around it that's multicolored circle, Instagram colored circle, right? And that means they have an Instagram story happening right now. And stories are ephemeral, ephemeral content, which means it goes away um, if you don't view it, uh, well, it goes away after a certain time limit stories is 24 hours. So a st Instagram story will, 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 will be dis available to your audience for only for 24 hours. And afterwards your audience can no longer see it unless you take that story and you make it into what's called highlight. A highlight is on your Instagram profile, or on, maybe not on yours, but you go to mine. Okay. You'll see that underneath my bio. There are a bunch of circles underneath my bio. Those circles are called highlights. And highlights are basically stories that I decided to keep as a highlight so that you can see them. And uh, if, even if Instagram story, your Instagram story goes away after 24 hours, you can still go and find your old stories to add as highlights if you want to. And stories um, can be an image, can be a short video, can be um, text only. Uh, so stories are pretty, pretty, it could be a poll. It could be all kinds of different things. It could be a link. You can have a story that click out of Instagram onto your website or onto a YouTube video or onto whatever you want to. So stories are very versatile, but they're, they're, they're ephemeral. They only last for 24 hours, which is supposed to pressure the audience into like, oh, I better look at the story before it goes away kind of thing. That's the original idea. I don't know if it still works like that anymore, but, uh, but it certainly highlights your profile picture. Whenever people, whenever you comment or post or whatever, they see your, whenever they see your image, it, you know, if you have a story happening within the last 24 hours, it'll be like a colorful circle around your picture, profile picture. Um, so how does it all fit together, right? Basically it's a content plan. Um, I don't wanna say this cause then you don't have to buy my course. So this is kind of frustrating, but I will say it uh, to save you some money. And I'm joking because my course is way, way more in depth than this. But um, so how it all fits together basically is you should definitely try all the above. Because if you don't try all the above, you won't be able to test the power of Instagram. So if you aren't making stories, try different different types of stories and see what it does. If you aren't making videos or reels, whatever you want to call them, upload videos. Okay. And see how it see how say how it does in terms of your comments or your engagement with your audience. If you haven't uploaded carousel posts, you should try that too. If you haven't uploaded single images, obviously try that as well. Um, remember, the easier it is to consume, the more engagement it tends to get. 
So single images tend to get more engagement than carousel posts, right? Uh, which tend to get more engagement than videos because it's more hassled for them to watch a video and like figure out what you're trying to say or be entertained by it. And the, the, but it doesn't mean and stories. Um, and no, let me. But but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't make videos. You see what I mean? Because every level of ease of engagement um, reaches a certain uh, level of audience, right? So like the the easiest to engage with, for example, you upload a picture of yourself, selfie, selfie photos are easiest to engage with. Who, who's not going to support you and click like on your selfie photo? Everyone's going to do that. Okay. So it's not, it's not, but it's shallow engagement. It's not meaningful engagement. You see what I mean? Whereas for them to go through the hassle and the energy of watching your video, even for 30 seconds. Yeah. A lot less people will engage with it, but you're building more of a relationship, right? It's not, it's no longer shallow engagement. It's deeper engagement. You see, so you have to do all of the above to, to reach the different levels of your audience. And all levels are important because sure, you want to reach more people with your cute selfie photo or picture of your butt um, or like a, a, a you know, a easily likable inspirational quote. Who's not going to like a quote from Buddha or Jesus or, you know, whatever, <laughs> Brene Brown, <laughs> you know, modern Jesus or whatever. Who's not going to like it? Everyone's going to like it. It's easy to get, get, get you more reach but it doesn't build the depth with relationship with your audience, you see. So it's, you need all the above. Stories, ironically, you'd say, well, just, George is saying stories seem to, easy to engage with and it's there's more pressure. You got 24 hours. So maybe that reach, reaches the most people. Ironically, it's the opposite. Stories tend to only reach your hottest fans, your biggest fans, because they have to, they have to either go to your profile and click on your, click on your profile picture to see your story or they have to like, see your grid post, you know, it comes up or, or, or they have to, you know, your your only your biggest fans will see your stories highlighted when they go into Instagram uh, on the home screen. They're, they only highlight several stories on the home screen when, when people are scrolling through and your biggest fans, the ones who have most engaged with your stuff are, 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 the, are the ones who see your, your stories highlighted at the very top of the home screen. So that's why the stories tend to be the deepest Con the deepest engagement, the deepest level of audience, you see, which are important too. You're not going to get as much engagement with the stories, okay? Partly also because it's only 24 hours, but it reaches your biggest fans. So this is why stories are often things like, oh, behind the scenes, like, oh, I'm walking my dog. I've had a, you know, passing thought or whatever. It's like your biggest fans. It's like, it's like, it's almost like you're testing ideas with your biggest fans. So anyway, try all the above. If you have any other comments about Instagram strategy, um, feel free to comment below. I am actually in process. I'm kind of excited by this. I'm in process of relaunching my Instagram course as a much more fuller course in partnership with a buddy of mine who has, who is highly successful on Instagram, way more successful than me, 200 plus thousand, 200 plus thousand Instagram followers on uh, this buddy of mine. Um, uh, I mean, he, he, you know, we, we, we exchanged Instagram strategies as well. Cause he trusts my marketing guidance and perspective and all that stuff, but I have way fewer uh, fans. And so we certainly, we like, I have about what 9,000 Instagram followers or whatever he has 200,000. So we have like two different strategies on Instagram. Like I am actively trying to not be famous on Instagram. I'm actively not trying to not have a big as audience as him because I don't have the energy or the, or the strategy really for, for that level of thing. It's a different strategies for him. It's, he is, he has a strategy of taking, you know, like, like selling like a Substack membership of $10 a month. And that that's plenty for his livelihood. And that's all he hates launching courses. Unlike me, I launch like 10 courses a year and I'm happy with launching courses. So we have totally different business models and therefore I'm trying to keep my audience small. He's trying to grow his audience as big as possible. And we're collaborating to teach the next Instagram course. So I guess this is, I didn't expect this to be a bit of a sales message because I thought I was like cutting, shooting myself in the foot by teaching you the strategy, but anyway, or part of it. But anyway, you might want to check out my, my upcoming Instagram course, join my email list. You'll find out about it. It's going to be way better than the previous one. And so I'm excited too. Anyway, so I hope this, this is helpful as an over, overall strategy. You might want to watch this again to kind of hear the different parts of it. 
uh, comment below with any questions you have about Instagram strategy, because I'll build that into the upcoming course. Um, feel free to share below any, any key insights you've learned as you've used Instagram in terms of strategy as well. So thank you for watching.